future former Team Hearth League viewers. Uh, we are live tonight with our third game of the Ragnaros, also soon to be named differently, League Final. And uh, that's uh, that's going to be Cinder versus Two Star Mako. Mako, I, I'm going to get that wrong all night. I don't care. We're going to figure this out as we go along here. Um, so I am Donde, and I am joined tonight by the only guy I can't catch on ladder, and that's Markshire. How you doing, Markshire? I am doing great. Yeah, actually, uh, before the show, I looked up like the anime scene in Kill a Kill where Two Star Mako does like her transformation or whatever to try to figure out how to pronounce that and it is mako or something like that so we'll try to pronounce it correctly tonight yeah i'll try to keep the mistakes to uh, a minimum but uh this is a, this is a big series a big big match tonight as we know uh we we're looking at a, a 2-0 deficit for uh, collective mayhem right now and uh, this this could be the end of the series if uh, Two Star Mako happens to take it for HSA. So a lot on the line here, and Collective Mayhem just trying to basically keep the season alive uh, as Cinder will try to uh, to, to beat him. And uh, we're looking at the lineups and just kind of getting an idea of what we might expect tonight. Uh, definitely a little bit against the grain for both of these uh, players as we see Cinder not bringing Druid, just bringing Paladin, Rogue, Shaman, and Warlock, and then uh, Mako not bringing... Uh, or bringing Druid, he's the only member of HSA to bring Druid. He's bringing Druid, Hunter, Paladin, Warlock. So uh, I'm definitely interested to see how this plays out. And uh, Mark, Mark Char, what's your initial impressions about what we, what we think might see tonight? Yeah, so I think the, the absence or presence of the Druid class is the really defining thing about these lineups. Uh, we saw HSA team member MMI go into Discord you know, a couple weeks ago and talk about how you know, Druid wasn't a good class. It wasn't close to being the top four. Um, if you thought it was one of the top four classes, you were wrong. And we see that Mako is the only person on HSA to bring Druid. Um, so I don't necessarily think that's a mistake. Uh, HSA does have a very, you know, numbers, percentage-based approach to lineups. And I think Mako and the rest of his team just decided that Druid was the best percentage-based bring uh, to the match against Cinder. And Cinder does have some have some classes that match up fairly well uh, against Druid. However, um, really just depending on the build, but there's definitely some rogue builds, um, some pally builds that can do pretty solid against Druid as a whole. Um, so we'll have to see both nothing too out of the ordinary from either of these players, though both just very solid classes. Definitely, and I know uh, that, like you said, that was something that MMI had talked about uh, Druid being weaker than. Uh, it was perceived and another uh, drum he was banging earlier in the season was warlock being strong uh, weaker than it was perceived as well and i think as we can see i think only two of the members of hsa brought warlock this is that right that uh sounds only right one, to me sorry. although yeah yeah just mako was the yes, only Mako. one and cinder's one of only two who brought it for collective mayhem so uh, i think that's something that a lot of the league probably stood up and i guess took notice on uh that that warlock has been a bit of an under So uh, just getting the bands here, or like looking to get the bands, uh, I guess uh, just in media impressions, what do you think will be the result of the of the game here tonight, just looking at uh, everything pre- uh, Pre-ban, it's tough to say. I think... Hmm, I think this is a situation where I would still get Mako the well, I, I think I'd still give Mako the slight edge just because I he brought Druid and, and Warlock for uh, deviating from what HSA typically brought. Um, so I think he may have some tricks up his sleeve that Cinder did not qu quite prepare for. Um, but aside from that, I think these lineups are just fairly even. It's it's hard to say that there is one that definitely. And uh, I definitely agree with that. I, you know, in my initial impressions, and when we talked about it on Hearth Center, I thought that Mako was favored, just in uh, in terms of the the record he's put forth this season, the body work that he's had, and uh, you know, Cinder's not not a slouch in any means uh, of of the word here. So I think that this will still be a good series, but uh, we do have the bans now, and uh, Cinder's Paladin is going to be banned, and Mako's Warlock is going to be banned. Okay. So let's take a look at what the lineups kind of look like. 
So without Cinder having a Paladin, uh, Rogue, Shaman, Warlock versus Druid, Hunter, Paladin. Definitely interesting. Uh, it looks like, you know, a Paladin, most likely an odd Paladin, probably looks to be to start kind of banning out what, what might be the most aggressive of the decks. Wonder if that may, might uh, lead to believe, uh, like, control or an even warlock i guess uh or less no less less likely a control or an even warlock from for mako maybe like a zoo warlock yeah definitely um an interesting an interesting band for sure uh so we'll have to see how that ends up absolutely so i think we can go ahead and get these guys ready to start here so I'm going to send out a message for them to uh, to kick it off, and then we'll jump in and see what we get in game one. And just a viewer note, uh, Cinder will be on the bottom when we start. So that would mean Mako is on the top. And they're jumping in right now. So here we go. Round, match three of the finals. Cinder versus Mako. Game one. All right. And we've got Cinder on the zoo lock going up against Mako. Uh, right now, this looks to be a spell hunter. I guess technically could be a secret hunter running Unleash the Hounds. Um, as some sort of tech, but I think that's very unlikely, seeing as uh, Mako did ban Cinder's Paladin. Uh, so this... And we see Light Warden and Keliseth right off the bat in Cinder's hand. That's almost the ideal start, uh, you know, other than having one of those starts where you can uh, hurt yourself right away, heal yourself with the coin uh, into into Voodoo Doll, and then just drop Happy Ghouls. But uh, Kaliseth is always a welcome sight if you're definitely a uh, very very solid start from Cinder here. And Mako having the Spellstone and picking up that Rexar, that's a very powerful swing in this matchup. Um, it can often clear off. A lot of the zoo's board, however, with the Kaliseth, I think we'll see a lot of Cinder's minions at three health or above, so it may be a little bit less inf impactful in this, this particular. And looking at uh, the options here that, that Mako's got from his tracking, Secret Plan, Candle Shot, Unleash the Hound, Secret Plan maybe leads me to believe it is it is a spell hunter. I think so. It's it, It's so odd to to see that card run at all. I'm wondering what particular matchups it helps against. It's definitely good for, you know, getting extra secrets to uh, your spellstone up, but other than that, it often feels very slow to me, and I think that's part of the reason why it hasn't seen consistent play. Well, I think that draw of to my side uh, it quells any other possibilities that this is not a spell hunter. He's going to drop the candle shot down to uh, start chipping away at the Kaliseth, but that actually... Uh, that actually could be considered a bad move here because now the Voodoo Doll can heal into the Kaliseth for the Light Warden and pump that right up. Yeah, definitely. It uh, it leaves Cinder or it leaves Mako very vulnerable to a Happy Ghoul play uh, from Cinder that he wouldn't otherwise be available for. Um, Cinder does not have the Happy Ghoul here, um, but he does have a very strong tempo play with a two four Void Walker plus the Light Warden. Yeah, the Voidwalker is a great pickup because, as we know, it was pumped up by Kaliseth. And now he's got the Fungal Enchanter in hand, too. So if the Candle Shot happens to go into the, the Voidwalker, uh, he would have a double heal for, for buffing that Light Warden. But the Hunter's Mark is right on time for Mako, and it's going to go ahead and clear off the Voidwalker easily. Yep. And I think part of the reason we saw Mako hit into that Kaliseth is he really wants to play this Freezing Trap to buff up his Spellstone, but he doesn't want to give Cinder another Kaliseth, even if it's going to only be a 4-mana 2-2. Two -two. This is a matchup that can go on for a while, and getting that double buff on all of the cards in Cinder's deck is just going to be too much. He's just going to try to take down the Kaliseth, 
using candle shot hits um, and freezing trap, really just any other minion in Cinder's deck is going to be a better hit than the Kaliseth in this situation. Yeah, with Kaliseth coming down, it already takes a lot of things out of range of Rexar, so that uh, makes makes life a little bit harder already. And uh, curious here, he, he does drop the Kobold Librarian instead of uh, possibly using the Fungal Enchanter to get a double buff on the Light Warden, but now he's rewarded by the fact that he can play a second Light Warden and play the Voodoo yeah, and I do like this a lot from Cinder, um, just opting to go wide, heading into Mako's turn four, when he knows you know, there's no threat of Rexar now. He can just push a ton of damage. Um, he doesn't necessarily have to go for the Fungal, when he can just push wide, and there's really just no one card Mako has that's good against this board. Even Unleash the Hounds just does very to uh, clear this off. And the Freezing Trap will come down here, and that seems more like a play out of necessity than anything else, as, uh, you know, trying to make sure that he can uh, put up a little bit of a wall for some of the damage that's going to come through, but uh, it's it's going to be coming in hard and fast real quick. Yep, and uh, Cinder, I don't think, should have played the Flame Imp first, just in case it was Explosive Trap, um, Definitely. but he does not get punished here and instead has a huge amount of damage coming in with this fungal enchanter buffing up the light yeah this game could literally just be over this turn here um because you might not even get to rexar options really animal companion i guess uh what does that really do for you i suppose here <sighs> yeah i i don't it. see yeah i i don't think there's a way for mako to survive here just such a powerful We'll start with Kaliseth, and then Cinder hitting a lot of one-drops that were buffed up, which is exactly what you want after the Kaliseth draw. And this is going to be game one here, Cinder going up 1-0. And now that's, that's something that we saw earlier uh, when we cast it on Monday. We saw uh, Itachi really struggle with Hunter and got swept, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mako starts off with, uh, with a Hunter loss here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, these we saw a lot of aggro mirrors in that Monday match, and Spellhunter may not exactly be characterized as an aggro deck, um, but it is looking to come up with uh, early aggressive starts, maybe you know, chaining a couple of early minions with Animal Companion or something into Spellstone, and Mako was just completely unable to do that there with Cinder's explosive start. Um, it really just showed how volatile things are in these aggro mirrors, how quickly uh, games can end. Yeah, that's uh, the hallmark of the zoo lock is those crazy starts that you can just have two, three minions out and dealing massive amounts of damage within the first few turns. But not only that, there's so many ways they can have that explosive start. You know, you, like we talked about the voodoo doll with the happy ghoul. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, they, they can buff up the light war. And so there's so many options they have in that deck to go ahead and just slam damage out there quickly. And we saw it, uh, saw it happen right there. And we're going to get into game two now. It looks like even lock for, or even uh, shaman, I should say for Cinder. And uh, a druid of, well, some kind for Mako, since the, every druid kind of looks the same. <laughs> yeah, um, again, we can't really tell right now. We do see the Innervate from Mako, and uh, that's a card that I most often see in Togwaggle Druid or Mechathune Druid, yes. um, I would say. And then seeing the Florist, again, I'm guessing maybe Mali, but it's still hard to say as these are just all the Druid cards that every Druid deck runs because Wild yeah. Growth is good, Spreading Plague is good, Ultimate Infestation is very good. I think we can safely say it's not Token Druid, but that's about it. <laughs> But either way, it's a slow, slow start here for Cinder. Not a whole lot. Uh, well, the, the, mm -hmm. the Menacing Nimbus is going to take a little bit of pressure off of, uh, off of the Totem button, I think. But uh, yeah. Mako's got Wild Growth to drop on turn two here, and uh, I'm sure he'll be looking to hopefully pick up maybe like a Nourish or something here into the next turn after that. Yeah, um, and this is an interesting matchup. I think Spreading Plague is a card that can do a ton of work uh, just by nature of the Shaman hero power, uh, or be, of the even Shaman, they're going to be hero powering a lot since it's only one mana, and that just gets punished really hard by Plague. Uh, I think Cinder's path to winning this game is going to be something uh, the, the getting a cheap sea giant down early and just hoping Mako doesn't have uh, a natural 
by his team. If he can pick up a second giant too, or second large, I mean, he's got a large threat in the Lich King, but that's obviously not till turn eight. Um, if this is a mill druid, you know, or I, I should say, if this is a uh, a druid that wants to keep those naturalizes, you know, for late game, it, it's just it, it might be enough to at least overwhelm him early if he can get a wide enough board and uh, not have an answer, and, and Mako doesn't have an answer for it. Definitely. Um, and we do see the Moonfire pickup for Mako, so uh, we can be pretty positive that this is a Mally Ghost. Um, very solid, one of the more popular Druid decks. Um, and one that is favored in this matchup, but not by a ton, I would say. Correct. Uh, this it Corpse Taker pickup, favorite. yeah. Yeah, the Corpse Taker pickup by Cinder uh, getting the Wind Fury on is going to be pretty important because Mako doesn't have a great answer to it right now. He doesn't have a swipe or an upgraded Spellstone that he can use to help clear the If he really wants to, he can coin out the Spreading Plague, but that's really not a strong use of it, and that is going to play right into the Sea Giant possibility. Yeah. I, I'm not a huge fan of the plague. It would also just get really hard punished by a flame tongue. Um, if Cinder had that, that, I think it might be best for him to just go for the branching paths here and try to draw into some more. Yeah, branching paths, two draws, does give you the opportunity to hopefully pull off one of your naturalizes. But uh, just under 10% chance of grabbing... Oh, no, he's gonna... Ooh. Going for the armor, that's Pretty surprising, because Mako's hand is not great right now. I guess he can go Spreading Plague into Coin Lich King, but other than that, he's not doing a ton. So I'm surprised to see him not use at least one of those uh, to draw a card. Yeah, I would have liked to see at least the first one and then just kind of reassess it from there. But that Earthen Might, uh, nice pickup for Cinder. That's an extra four damage right away. Yep. And and now this board just becomes so much worse for Mako to play Spreading Plague into because two of his 1-5s are going to immediately die. And, and now he has to invest both Swift and Moonfire in if he wants to clear this corpse take. And now, interesting, he could have had the swipe last turn. Obviously, he wouldn't have been able to use it. Mm -hmm. That would have been his next draw. Uh, so as we see now, that really wasn't a massive downside to having uh, not drawn immediately but the the swipe is now it's out of range with that elemental might on uh, the corpse taker because he could have used moonfire and then swiped to at least clear that off but now it's not an option right he can of course still clear it while taking five and it's not that bad of a play to swipe and just leave a bunch of zero one totems on the board uh because again you know that you do have spread um often to go for it now was a little bit surprising, considering you know that two of them are going to immediately get cleared. Off. I think his, his thought process will be that it probably it's going to drop it, uh, drop that shield off of it, and mm -hmm. uh, allow him to clear it a little more cleanly. But uh, Cinder, seeing that spreading play come down, knows, hey, let's go ahead and drop more minions on the board since we've already seen one of the two that's going to be in my. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's another downside of the spreading plague is just playing right into this sea giant and. Because Mako didn't draw, at least as of right now, he doesn't have a naturalize in hand. And Innervate's a pretty, pretty big air draw. Probably going to see something like maybe Coin Lich King here, or even just Dream Petal Floor. Yeah, uh, not a ton to do. I, I think he maybe just going for Swipe Moonfire and trying to clear some of these minions off of the board makes sense. And then you have access to Coin Innervate UI. Uh, next turn, which should swing the game a little bit back into Mako's favor. Yeah, that might be the uh, the more proactive play, just to save a little bit of extra damage. So he is going to go ahead and use his face to clear off the, the corpse. Yep. Definitely reasonable here. You don't really have to um, use the moon yeah, yeah, yeah. fire, and it can come in here. Yeah, that sea giant is a huge draw. Slight ordering error there too. If he if he had attacked in uh, first to heal, it would have healed up uh, Cinder's face, and then he could have swiped for the one damage. So uh, it probably won't make a difference in this mm, game, sure. but he could have one damage. Yeah, no, definitely relevant to point that out. Those things can end up mattering. Um, and yeah, 
second giant coming down uh cinder knows there's no naturalized in hand so this can definitely get a lot um definitely get out of hand very quickly as you said here i think we are going to see the innervate coin into ui and uh, a good good pickup, I suppose, with the Ferocious Howl, uh, since not usable this turn, but it will get quite a bit of armor uh, down next turn in addition to drawing another card. There's Malagos, so Ooh. it's a, an important piece. Yep, Mali, really important. Uh, a lot of the ways that the Mali Druid can win this game is just uh, sticking Malagos on the board and and uh, the even Shaman not really having an answer to it. So Cinder may be running anywhere from zero to two hexes. I think that's going to be a really important uh, factor. And uh, uh, Mak uh, is just getting hammered here by the <gasps> Sea Giants, and Cinder, a complete disrespect of the 5-5 uh, the five five on board, he's just going to send it right to the face. And, uh, yeah, versus Howl, I think, has to be the play, but yeah. uh, I, I don't know if that... It, it might just be too late. I mean, Mako has to find exactly Second Spreading Plague to even survive another turn. And... Second versus Howl actually might that's, survive. That's true. If he picks up Naturalize here, it would be possible. But, oh, and he actually didn't have an yeah, enough mana absolutely. to draw with the Wild... And that's actually... This is not, a lot of damage. Not lethal, not quite lethal. But it is pretty much checkmate, I would say, at this point. Wait, Spreading that was literally, literally that was the only lethal. Draw. Yeah, that actually was lethal. Cinder, Fire Elemental uh, Face, yeah, but... Oh, yeah, the Fire Elemental to the face instead. Yes, you could have. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking of the Merc Spark Eel for two damage. I didn't see that Fire Elemental come into hand. No, I do think it's unlikely that he still loses uh, from here, considering this commanding board state. Um, I, yeah, and, and Mako will just concede, and that's a quick advantage for Cinder here. And that, I guess, is the, uh, is the possibility that you run into with Drew. Is sometimes you just brick a little bit like that, and, uh, you know, in a... I wouldn't say even Shaman is an aggressive deck, but it certainly is a board-centric mid-range deck that if it can get rolling and you don't find any of that removal or any sort of way to staunch the bleeding, you just get overrun real quick. And uh, and that's what we saw in that game. And now it's a quick 2-0 for, uh, for Cinder. Yeah, I, I really think the, the key turn looking back at the match is when Mako's spreading plagued instead of going just for a white moonfire clear because it allowed Cinder to drop that sea giant and it allowed... Two of his 1-5s just very easily get cleared off. Uh, and I think you're looking for just a slightly better swing turn with Spreading Plague in that matchup because it's so powerful. And now we are going to see the Rogue for Cinder. So that's the uh, final deck he's going to win with. And we're going right back to Hunter for Mako. So we know Spell Hunter. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to see what we get for a Rogue. And I see a Necrium. Yeah, uh, Necrium Blade. That tells me that this deck is... Uh, Cube um, or you know, Death Cube. Rattle Rogue uh, goes by a couple names. Not a very popular deck. Not a deck I've really run into on ladder. Uh, but we know how powerful Death Rattle Hunter's early starts uh, <laughs> uh, with you know cards uh, like Devil Sword Egg getting a proc into a Play Dead or a Terror Sail Sock. And Death Rattle Rogue can do some similar things with early eggs and Necrium Blade. Um, and they also Absolutely. have an easier time giving their eggs attack with cards like cold bud you uh you didn't run into it on ladder because you didn't run into me when you were grinding up to legend so <laughs> run this thing all the way up to like rank one uh, i love this deck yeah yeah um interesting hands not not very proactive hand from mako and i guess a solid hand from cinder as far as death rattle road goes i i guess the only other thing he's looking for here would be egg right yeah, you want something to proc uh, that Necrium Blade with, you know, and, and it's unfortunate that he picked up the Cavern Shiny Finder while also keeping the Necrium Blade, because, you know, mm -hmm. you want to go ahead and pick pick it up from your deck using the Shiny Finder, which I'm sure he'll just drop that down here. 
I wouldn't be surprised to see like Cavern Shiny Finder now, and then Coin Corpse Taker next turn, and uh, possibly try to get a Cold Blood to stick. Up. Yeah, no, no, for sure. One of the th things that I think is cool about the way this deck works is uh, you can Necrium Blade. Blade, um, when you have more mana, just Necrium Blade, equip it, attack, and then just hit your hero power for two mana to proc it in the same turn. So you can get some pretty cool templates uh, going with that just because of the way that the rogue hero power works. Um, Cinder just taking it slow, which I think is fine because the Shiny Finder is going to die immediately to the. And that's actually an unfortunate draw there. The. the... Zilliax is going to take away a few things from Corpse Taker's repertoire, but uh, mm. we're going to see that Wandering Monster come out of the field, and oh! Pretty weak. Oh, wow. Or... Pretty pretty strong pickup from, from Akko. Just usually when a three-attack weapon attacks into your Wandering Monster, it's just going to die completely, but having this 2-2 two -two yeah, is uh, definitely And we're going to see a second Wandering Monster come down. And uh, Mako's using a lot of secrets. He does have another one in the hand in the way of Explosive Trap, but not seeing any Spellstone yet. No, no Spellstones here. Kind of a uh, hand from Mako. And with the Necrium Blade on one durability, but nothing right now to proc it with, uh, I wonder if he just goes Corpse Taker here to then try... Try to coin out well, the mechanical wealth yeah, next the, turn and actually take next that blade. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like we <sighs> were saying, downside though is this is not a uh, not a shield, yeah, no, no taunt, <laughs> no no divine shield on the corpse taker because Ziliax is in hand. But uh, that's still probably going to eat one of those uh, candle shot charges. I would I would assume here. Yeah, I I, I didn't actually realize that Ziliax was responsible for both the life steal and the divine shield and taunt completely. Um, not great there as Mako is going to be able to get back on the board a little bit, but uh, some solid tempo terms coming up. There are, there are a couple different builds of this deck, like uh, the one that I was running had Argent Squire for a little redundancy with Divine Shield, and also uh, one copy of the 3-3 uh, three, three Pirate that reduces with the, with the weapon. Um, mm -hmm. Dread Corsair. Off the top of my head, I was just trying to figure out the name. So uh, it gives yeah, you a yeah. little bit of other options. So he's probably not running, or obviously not running either of those and opting to go, uh, you know, put all of his eggs in the Ziliax basket. But I think right here we're going to see Mechanical Wolf get dropped down after, uh, you know, take away that, af af before he takes away that wolf and get a get a quick 7-7-2-2 seven, seven, two, two on board. Yeah, no, definitely seems good. I You do just have to get something on board there. Looks like he's thinking about the egg instead, which just seems like a slightly worse body for me, because you're not really doing anything that relevant with your other two mana. He could play Cavern Shiny Finder. It, it, the 3-1 body just doesn't do that much, so I, I do like seeing the Mechanical Whelp come out here instead yeah, force your opponent to respond to You can cube that 7-7 seven, seven too. Or you can plop Zilliax down onto the 7-7, seven, seven, and now you're healing for 10. Yes. Yeah, the 7-7 seven, seven is a mech, and if there's no freezing trap to get in the way, uh, that can be a huge swing for a deck that otherwise doesn't have a ton of healing. Well, the good news is uh, he's going to get that healing here, because he can throw the uh, Mechanical Whelp into the Misha first, just to make sure there's no freezing trap, and that Ziliax will heal for a massive... Oh, man. He can even... Old blooded if he wants and heal for fourteen. Yep, he he could do that if he wants. But he's, <laughs> you know what? Ten is just enough. He says, "I don't need I don't need fourteen health." Yeah, may 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 not have been completely necessary, um, but it would have been okay to see that. And yeah, all of a sudden, Cinder has the board back in a, a big way. Trade off and this 4-2, knowing that there's no Snake Trap or Venom Strike Trap, and Mako still has to respond to this 10-9 with Lifesteal. And th this is really, like we talked about, this is what Cubro can do. Sometimes you just you just go off in the late game or, or middle to late stages of the game, and uh, you can create multiple 7-7s seven very quickly, and we see he's still got Cube in hand, so he has the possibility of getting even more of these 7-7 uh, seven, seven Mechanical Dragons very, very 
Yeah, definitely. And it's going to be awkward for Mako to clear this because he has to use both the Wing Blast and the Kill Command. Uh, luckily, he can trade in the 2-2 two -two and make that only cost uh, 1 mana, but he's healing his opponent for another 10 if he does that. Yeah, I, I, I don't see a way around it, though. Well, he's going to go ahead and take a look and see what secret he gets first, and uh, Explosive, Misdirection, and Snipe are the choices. Snipe, not really a great choice in this deck since, uh, you know, Cinder wants his stuff to die for the most part. Misdirection could be the pain. Yeah, uh, I think Misdirection is, and I, he might just want to play it here because this is misdirection is something that uh, a lot of people can forget about because it's just so uncommonly in meta decks. So there is a chance that Cinder, you know, forgets that it's a card and just goes uh, with the attack to face without, you know, hero power. And he'll grab that second Necrian Blade. Drop that up right away and go ahead and use that first. Procs the Wandering Monster, and it's going to be all our pieces. And he could take a lot of damage. Oh, that is it is probably the heal it. worst. Well, yeah, it, it okay. It does actually heal him for ten. So no net damage taken, but it bringing that ten to uh, or bringing that ten attack minion down to two health is not exactly what Cinder wanted to do, but he can still basically heal up to full by just trading into the 3-3 three, three here. He opts to get the 10 damage to face, and mm. he's going to get the bad news that Rexar is going to come down, which is a nice smooth board clear for Mako, and will allow him to start actually pushing some damage here. Yeah, uh, definitely the slight punish there for hitting face instead. Where Cinder's not really in a position where he needs face. Uh, but DK is going to get a solid swing turn. And this is going to be how Mako wins this game, is just by outvaluing with the build a beast hero power, which, as we've seen you know, throughout THL matches and recently, it, you can just get some insane value off this two mana hero power so that's going to be mako's mo for the rest of this series or for the rest of this game i think just hitting that button every turn he can yeah not 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 a doubt in my mind that's that's the right play is to make sure you get as many crazy beast combos as you can get and uh he does pick up a uh seven mana five six poisonous deal three damage <laughs> to enemy hero restore three health to your hero <laughs> Uh, which is a fun little combo, but we're gonna see Lich King just that's the choice for uh for Cinder all day, I think. Here, yep, very solid Doom Pact. Uh, not a bad card, yeah, not horrible. He Cinder doesn't really care about the downside in this situation, um, so definitely can be good if Mako gets a big board built up, and it might be something Cinder wants to go through right here. In fact, if Mako chooses to throw down this life drinker. And the uh, the Hunter's Mark, I believe that came right off the top of the deck there mm -hmm. uh, to counter the Lich King, unfortunately. Trying to think if he has any other choice besides the Doom Pact. I don't believe so. No, and uh, Cinder could have played the A first if he wanted to um, to get that 5-5 five, five down. He, of course, can just play it now and in Necrium Blade, he, he chooses to go with the Blight Nuzzle Crawler first, which I think is also very reasonable. Uh, he just has that proc ready to, go, ready to go in case Mako wants to build a beast and get some peak in Necrium Blade and uh, get that poison. If he really wanted to hold on to the uh, the Doom Pact as well, he could have used the Crawler and then used the weapon into the Wolf, which would have popped out a 1-1 Poisonous with Rush and he could have taken out the 5 which would have mm. left uh, Mako only with a 2-2 on board. Yeah, definitely uh, would have been a reasonable option there, too. And now because of it, Mako does have the full clear. And 
now has a pretty solid hand. Not only does he have the Build a Beast hero power each turn, he has a variety of secrets and removal options available to him. So it's going to be sort of difficult for Cinder to build up a uh, sticky hard to remove from this position. And I like Wandering Monster as the pick here. Uh, he's already got, what, two explosive traps in hand, so the third one there is kind of excessive. Uh, Venom Strike Trap is the pick, even though he doesn't have anything on board right now and uh, mm, would have to yeah. build the beast in order to have something. Yeah, I mean, uh, planning for the future, I sure maybe not the pick I would have made, but I, I have no doubt Mako is going to get stuff on, on board. It's... Um, Cinder from here, I think, just wants to go wide as much as possible. Maybe uh, Egg, Cube, and Necrium Blade. Uh, fairly solid. Great. I could also get behind uh, Stormwatcher, Egg, and attacking with the mm -hmm. Necrium Blade. Yeah. Yeah, that, that Stormwatcher, um, mainly existing this deck to give Corpse Takers Wind Fury, I believe. Uh, but if it gets buffed with cold blood, can do a lot of face oh, yeah. damage. I and think the only worry is hanging out on the deck too. Right. Yeah, I, I think the main worry with that is just with uh, all the random hunter spells Mako has. There are a ton, uh, like deadly shot and like you know hunter's mark that can deal with uh, just sink big minions very easily. Now, I would have liked to have seen the egg come down on the right side of the mechanical dragon just to protect against the uh, random crushing walls, which we know mm. does show up sometimes in those rock the Yeah, definitely. Um, no punishment here, though, as that is not going to be an option for Mako. Mm -hmm. And Mako just, I think, has a completely full hand here, so it's hard to see exactly all the stuff he has available. To, uh, so I guess he... he he might not be able to go for a build a beast right now before playing a card because yeah, of the and space. And it, it can't be understated too that there is 13 damage on board right now, and explosive traps are are a risky proposition because you know you just go ahead and kill that mechanical woman yeah. and seven seconds <laughs> out instead. So that's the the nice part of the death rattle rogue is that uh, you know just like uh, just like we see with cube hunter, so many things are just sticky sticky minions that uh, cause trouble to remove unless you have the very specific conditions like silence or multiple board clears that can take care of them in one shot definitely um mako is going to be able to fully upgrade that spell stone though and he is threatening a counter lethal right here and, and unfortunately for cinder he just doesn't have much in the way of defensive options in this deck uh, with the Zilliax gone, his Corpse Taker is not going to get any sort of buff. Um, so he's just going to have to try to deal with this board on his own. Maybe somehow set up a lethal next turn because he, he's running out of time very quickly. Both secrets proc there, so at least for Cinder, he now knows what he's dealing with. And he'll use the egg to clear off the newly acquired Cobra, which will give him a 5-5 five five at least. But he's going to have to use the 7-7 seven seven now to clear off one of these 3-3s, three which will still leave uh, 9, 10, 11, 15 damage uh, just hanging. And we know Kill Command's in the hands. So I, think, I think that's actually just it for, uh, for Mako. Yep. Yeah, unfortunate. Um, but, you know, close game. Um, we see the power of Rockdalar here. Um, that's a card that, when it was released, a lot of people uh, just derided for, you know, never being viable at all with Hunter not having spells, but it really shows its power here as Maka was able to pick up that spell stone, and that's going to be what ends up winning him. It turns out when you uh, pick up a handful of spells that it typically shows that a, quite a few of them end up being pretty Oh, yeah. I, I mean, just even so much burst damage in the way of you know, Kill Command and Dire Frenzy just by having any beast on board. And Mako is not going to go down too quickly. He's going to um, even the series a little bit 2-2-1, two, two, and Cinder is going to have two more chances to get a win with his cube to take the series. 
and that is the first hunter win we've seen in our two streams. Uh, just want to remind everybody, and uh, you know, as as always, thank you guys for tuning in tonight. We really appreciate it. These are obviously the biggest matches of the year for us uh, as a league. So uh, anytime, uh, you know, if you have the opportunity to go ahead and subscribe to the channel, it's really appreciated. Always helps us out producing higher quality content, producing more content. Uh, subscribe uh, is free if you have uh, Twitch Prime through Amazon Prime. So uh, you know, go ahead and uh, you know, help us out if you have a chance. So really appreciate that. Also, make sure to follow us on Twitter if you have not done so and you use Twitter. Uh, I believe that's at THLHS. So do that. Uh, we are on Facebook as well. Make sure you're checking us out there. Uh, pretty much uh, everywhere. Discord too. So, you know, come on down if you're not in the league already and uh, come talk to us. We're like 98% of us are cool. And, you know, the town drunk is like the other 2%. So. I'm just kidding. He's actually stream mopping for us tonight. Uh, he's he's taking time out of his busy <laughs> schedule, so I just wanted to give him a shout out, but also give him a little bit of a rib in the process too. So thank you, Donnie. We love you, and uh, we're going to jump into game four here, which, as we said, uh, Cinder still on that cube rogue, and he is up two to one now. And we're going to go ahead and see the paladin for the first time, and it looks like an odd. Yeah. Wow. Um, odd paladin from Akko, who you know we have to say is favored. In this matchup, as far as I know, Q-Rogue doesn't run fan of knives. Uh, and Mako's looking to be off to a pretty aggressive start uh, with several one drops. Yeah, this is uh, not a good matchup for the Q-Rogue. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, no real mass clears and all the paladin does is go wide. So yeah, it's, this is going to be an uphill battle for, for Cinder. He's got to control the board really quickly. Uh, it's, it's about a 70% matchup for the odd. Yep. Yeah. Like you said, an uphill battle. Uh, however, not the worst hand for Cinder here. Uh, that, that backstab definitely can come in handy and hench clan thug to contest the board in the early game is definitely what Cinder is going to want to see. So he's just going to dagger, poke off the divine, and uh, you know try to stall things for a little bit uh, before he can get to his. Yeah, I like the prospect of the of the hench clan coming down here, and he'll be able to take out two things on this turn if he chooses to with the backstab, as well as the. Now the uh, the backstab to be considered because if he does drop down a raid leader, which we do see in um, Mako's hand, he can go ahead and clear the Henshlan Thug with his board. Or if he has that uh, you know three mana maul, which we see that he also has, he can go ahead and clear it with his face. But he's going to go ahead and drop the backstab, which is a smart move. Yeah. And now Mako will have to find a way to deal with this uh, Henshlan Thug that's only going to get bigger. Yeah, I, I really like the aggressive line. It's you know incredibly low value to use your backstab on just a 1-1, one, one. but just the fact that his hench clan can survive another turn, I think, is really important, um, because that's just another turn that it can grow to plus one, plus one, uh, maybe force another minion from Mako's side to trade into it. And that's just all Cinder is trying trying to do in this position, just extend the game, you know, maybe one more turn when he can hit his, you know, Zilliax, his Lich King, just looking to get to some late game thing that's going to be able to get the bleeding. Yeah, Zilliax on top of a large dragon is really the main, the main way you win this game. You just kind of lock out the Paladin from doing any real face damage, and, uh, and at that point, you're just going to keep healing. So uh, you definitely want to see that if you're, if you're Cinder. Right now, Amako's trying to figure out the best way that he can go ahead and get damage on board, and I think it's going to be Firefly. I was thinking Firefly plus Hero Power. Nope, he's going to go with the uh, Veteran right now. Yeah, I, I like this. Again, the Odd Rogue shouldn't run any sort of early board clears, so just getting the most minions on board as possible um, is probably going to be optimal. Although, I, in this particular case, I guess the 1-2s, the 1-1s one one don't do a top. Uh, it's possible that they can add up here. And uh, Cinder drops down his Shiny Finder. Now that he has a Mechanical Wallop in hand, you know, a, a good option to go ahead and proc that blade. Uh, so the downside here being that he doesn't really have as much board presence as if he was to have put down two fire. Right. 
Um, I am slightly surprised to see Cinder go face instead of just hitting into one of these minions, but I guess in the vein of Fungal Mancer, it doesn't matter because Mako is still going to be forced to hit two minions in if he wants to hear uh, if he wants to clear this Hanged Clan thug. And I think he does. I think you have to, as we uh, mm -hmm. as we've seen throughout Hearthstone's history, things that get bigger don't. Uh, get easier to clear as the game goes on. Uh, something, something, questing uh, adventure. <laughs> so he'll go ahead and actually have a full board clear here with the Cavern Shiny Finder into the buffed up Firefly. He'll also have backstab for yeah. the Fungal Mancer. And, uh, you know, you're not too mad if uh, it's the middle of the game and against an Odd Paladin, you're actually starting uh, to gain a little bit of board. Definitely could be a worse situation um i'm a little surprised to see cinder go oh. for the necrian blade over the light nozzle, nozzle crawler though um he could have just equipped the necrian blade next turn and hero powered if he wanted a uh, proc it but now he has no way to get that poison in with rush out next turn well i'm i'm actually surprised that he equipped it and didn't attack with it because yeah, you do have well, a mechanical weapon in hand and you want to go ahead and drop that next turn right see he, yeah he already committed to attacking with his dagger earlier in the um, oh, so that's maybe right, not exactly. That. I apologize. Would've... Right, um, but he's not going to get too badly punished for this, as he's still going to be able to at least clear this corridor creeper with blight not plus cold blood. But Mako does have Leroy and Blessing of Might in hand, and is pushing a lot of damage currently. Yeah, the crawler could come down here and. Uh... He could just go ahead and pop it himself. That's, hmm, I think it's just a little bit too slow of a play there because Mako well, is going to have lethal it's, with it's exactly lethal. Yeah, Yeah, um, tough to predict the you know, exact Leroy yeah. blessing from your opponent here. Um, but still, I think it was worth going for a, a little bit more of aggressive. I think Mako is just double counting everything, making sure it's before he goes for it. But yeah, yeah he is going to see it here. And that's going to bring the series back to an even 2-2. Two, two. So now we know that we are dealing with, uh, you know, the what, what what's the remaining deck here for, for <sighs> with the Maligos Druid? It's a Mali Druid, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I do believe that the cube rogue is in this matchup, but I do think it's it's pretty close. Mal Mal Just Druid about 50-50. Oh, really? Okay. Didn't know it was that close. Could be anyone's game here. Yeah, I think this is uh, this is going to be an exciting finish, obviously, with a very, very even matchup, and, you know, Cinder obviously trying to avoid that reverse sweep, and Mako trying to close the series out right here. So let's see if, uh, you know, Mako obviously hoping for a bit of a better opening hand, and uh, Cinder does pick up the Necrian Blade, Backstab. Uh, I don't even know if you keep Backstab in this case, because it's not really a whole lot that you can use it on. And he is going to go ahead and pitch it, but he'll keep that Necrian Vile. Yeah, I, I like keeping the uh, Death Rattle Activators. This is a slower matchup. Cinder already knows the deck that Mako's playing. Um, and he really just wants the most value that he can, and just try to get a value in the mid-game turns. Um, if the game you know, just continues to go on. Mako is inevitably going to win the long game. He can have a time burst uh, with Mali Ghost. You know, Cinder has some strong mid-game swing turns with, you know, mechanical whelps or Devil Sore. That is how he's going to win the game. And we do assume Mako picks up a Naturalize, which he did not have the first time he played this deck. And uh, Firefly is the obvious opening choice for Cinder. And that Hench Clan Thug pickup's pretty nice. Yeah, Hench Clan is nice. Um, Mako, depending on just how these hero powers shake out, is probably going to be able to deal with it with Spellstone. Uh, but he's not going to hero power this turn because right he's top deck. Shiny Finder, a uh, decent pickup here. Could mm. be something he just drops down. Uh, could also opt to coin Necrian Blade, but I don't love that as much since you don't really have anything that you can use with it uh, in your hand. Yeah, um, it's not doing a ton. It probably would have just gotten hero powered off, so I think it's fine to save it here. 
Uh, Cinder, I, I'm not sure about it attacking with the dagger there because he is looking to go Hench Clan next turn um, and have that attack, but I guess he's not going to really run out of stuff to attack with with the Necrium Blade in hand. Right, I think you're hoping that you'll pick up something that the Necrium Blade will be able to proc, you'll be able to equip the Necrium Blade, and you're just going to keep attacking anyway, but uh, that's uh, obviously dependent <laughs> upon his deck co mm -hmm. Wait, yeah, I, I also, I just missed that he had Cold Blood in hand. I think that Flame Elemental Cold Blood was definitely worth considering on turn two. It isn't great against the Spellstone that Mako has in hand, but uh, it's just such a powerful play because you're forcing your opponent to have an answer to it and forcing that spellstone out early is going to mean that cinder or sorry that mako can't use it on a hench later in the game so that might have been a, a little bit of a better play there as well yep that's a, a play that i like to do as well whenever i have that available to me i know that you know druid's gonna obviously get a lot of armor so you need to get a lot of damage in there and uh, cold blood's one of the best ways to do that Mako opts to just drop the floop as a 3-4 with, uh, with really no, no other choice, I guess, in hand. Hmm. Yeah, I, and I, I get wanting to contest the board, but just not having that in the late game, just not even having it as a 0-mana 3-4 with Tyrant or to combo with Mali. A few years old. We did see from the previous game that Mako does, is running faceless, we saw that he had that in hand, so that makes that decision a, a little bit e easier, I think. And the Coldblood's going to come down now, and he's going to use it to clear off that floop and allow the Hench Clan Thug to have a guaranteed shot at survival here this next turn. Ooh, that pass is a great pickup from Mako. He can just draw okay. with the first one and then armor up to buff the Spellstone and, and have a clean and clear on the Sanctuary Clan Thug. And there's the Faceless that we were just talking about. Coming. Now the good news for Cinder is Mako does have a, a few of the combo pieces, but he still doesn't have, uh, you know, he doesn't have any ramp, he doesn't have any of the, he doesn't have the Malagos itself, obviously, so he's still missing quite a few things that will allow him to end the game quickly, but uh, Cinder's still also kind of drawing a little bit of air over here. Mm -hmm. The Blight Nozzle Crawler is the only thing that he can use to proc off the Necrian Blade. That's just really not that powerful. This match. Yeah, definitely just like slow, awkward hands from both of these players. Uh, we see Mako picking up the swipe. He can just have a uh, swipe hero power clear with this Blight Nozzle. Um, but Cinder just doesn't have a ton to play in the way of minions, and the only draw he has is just going to uh, draw him a Necrium blade, which he, he doesn't too much in hand with no activators for it. Michael mulling over, just dropping the Arcane Tyrant. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess he, he really values having that board for um, and it, it's fine for him if, you know, trade just ends up ha happening because he knows he can probably deal with the 1-1 ooze uh, fairly easily as the game goes on. So I can definitely see keeping the swipe here. You have five mana or more spell that would merit keeping Tyrant that much. Necrian Blade, the second one in Cinder Sam means now that Cavern Shiny Finder, unfortunately... Uh, it's just a 3-1 for 2, which is not all too great in a matchup where your opponent has a hero power that can kill it easily. And uh, interest, interesting choice to Necrium Vile. Yeah, um, getting a lot of stuff on board, he, he could have made the read that Mako did not have swipe in hand, but as we can see, he does. So Mako can just get a, a nice full clear. And I believe Donde just jumped out of the call. Uh, hopefully that was only temporary and he'll be back with us soon. Um, but we can see Mako choosing to not go with the swipe and instead just play slow, which is smart uh, with what a slow hand he has. And he's not really being pressured by Cinder right now. Cinder still hasn't drawn um, any of his you know, death rattles or anything. So this is, I think, a completely fine play. Can you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Did I get booted out? 
you yeah you got got booted out for a couple seconds there not really sure what happened but this, this sounds like donnie's or even... back <laughs> um are, are you still in are you still spectating oh yeah no i'm, I'm oh, here great. the whole time okay awesome so it was just discord so cool yeah we're, we're continuing to see both players just really really not draw well um cinder finally picked up a minion with storm uh, uh but we can see that's most likely going to get answered by the natural in mako's hand when it comes down next turn and for the time mako doesn't have a ton to do now that this blight nozzle has gotten its attack buffed up i think it's a lot easier to justify the swipe to clear it absolutely and swipe with the follow-up of the hero power uh, nice, easy, clear, and again, we're going to have to see if Cinder can find something that he can start building. And Welp is pretty good for that. Oh, yeah. N nice pickup there. Finally, something he can use to proc Necro. And, yep. yeah, knowing that Mako has a naturalize, and I think we would opt for the Welp, but Cinder doesn't know that so i think it, it's reasonable to just throw this down he's not expecting the uh to hit spreading play pickup for mako is a nice little backup plan now and uh, with both tyrants or one tyrant still in hand he's used one tyrant as, uh let's see faceless manipulator on the four eight and then naturalize it all right so he's going to kind of use cinder's deck against him here yeah I, mako just really being forced to play out his combo pieces in awkward situation just to stay alive uh we saw him use floop now faceless so if he drops mally he's really not gonna have any follow um so cinder can rest easy knowing that there isn't a huge amount of bird that he has to worry about but mally goes druid is such a powerful deck it win without just comboing their opponent out a lot of the time just by taking control of the and I think that's something that a lot of people don't realize about it. It's a deck that, like you said, it can win in multiple ways, but everyone just kind of tunnels their, their vision into, I can only win if I combo with Malagos. And a lot of pros will tell you that's really not the case. That's really not how you win a lot of the time. Yeah. No, I, this deck has just, I mean, I mean, Druid as a class just has access to so many tempo options. Um, and, and we can see here, my making the read that Cinder doesn't really have hard removal in his deck, and this Stormwatcher is going to stick. He can even protect it behind a 1-5 if he wants. Granted, that's uh, not protection that will stick around for a while, but uh, Mako can push a lot of damage here, and getting Mally down with just two moves could threaten, of course, if he is able to draw it. The Ziliax, though, is a nice piece in Cinder Sand. We already saw him drop it onto a 7-7 once in the previous game, and knowing that he's got that there is a nice option to heal. Uh, Necrium Vile, he's already used one of those, but he will have that if he wants to go ahead and make 14-14 uh, you know, worth of minions, which is never really mm -hmm. a bad yeah. feeling. But actually, uh, he could combo it now if he wants to hold on to, uh, to it for the next turn with the Carnivorous Cube. Ooh. Very tempting. Um, if I'm in Cinder's position, I might just want to cash in on these two seven sevens now with Necri, uh, because it's going to be so hard for his opponent to deal with it. And Cinder choosing to go with the Ziliax instead, and then sort of moused over the Necrium Vile. Uh, this is still a very powerful yeah. play. Uh, he can he Actually, can make the read. Yeah, he can make the read. Mako doesn't have any sort of transform effect in him. so this mechanical wealth will you know still have its pro uh go off and he'll still get that seven seven around. now we do see the spell stone in mako's hand so he does have an answer for the mechanical whelp which is obviously going to be his first move here. but beyond that you know he's got spreading plague he's got moon fire he's got dream petal force which does literally nothing right now other than be a <laughs> really over cost four four yeah and, uh, Cinder is really, really threatening here. Uh, a lot of 7-7s seven can pop out real quick, which we're going to see next turn. <laughs> Quite a few of them pop out. Yeah, and using second spreading plague feels bad. I, I mean, Mako just, just has to do it, or, or well, he's, facing he's dead on right board. Now. Yeah, unless he wants to trade a Stormwatcher into the 7th. 
which he may opt to. And, and at this point, I think Monaco feels like his only chance of winning is hitting Florist on to, or hitting Malagos with Dream Petal Florist and then comboing that with his second swipe uh, to get a board swipe. Cinder has to be absolutely salivating, though, seeing that second starting play. <laughs> He's about to go so wide with such huge minions. Uh, I think I think this game, like, just it just literally ended. This is oh, it. yeah. Cinder, yep, just attack here, get those whelps on board, and then get two more 7-7s. Yeah, wel welcome to Whelp Town. Many whelps, left side, <laughs> even side. Oh, man, and that Mally goes a little bit too... For Mako, this board from Cinder is just going to be too much, and he's going the series in a close 3-2. It, wow. It, you know, Cinder, you were biting your nails the whole time, and uh, he does manage to pick up the one win that he needs with the cube rogue, and it's going to be a 3-2 finish, and Collective Mayhem lives to fight another day. Yeah. Um, I, I was sweating there a little bit, but uh, yeah, 3-2 is going to uh, keep them in the series. Although, just looking at the point differential of uh, some of these wins, Cinder just a 3-2, but uh, Ultimate getting the 3-0 sweep over Itachi, and uh, uh, Sage getting the 3-1 over Chris is going to mean that there is the potential for HSA to uh, still win if Mayhem's next two wins are close. I believe the match, math checks out there, uh, but don't quote me. On it. <laughs> I, I won't quote you on that one, but uh, but yeah, it's it's exciting to know that we're uh, you know going to get some more meaningful Ragnaros matches here for the uh, remainder of season. And, and speaking of those matches, just so you guys know when those matches are going to be, uh, we've got one on Saturday, we got one on Sunday. Saturday is going to be Scritch versus Dave Petum, and that's at 8 p.m. And uh, we actually now have that Saturday is a doubleheader because Haymaker and Wolf Mac for the Sylvanas League just signed up for 9 p.m. So uh, that's going to be one of the big nights uh, remaining. And then Sunday, should that be necessary, at noon is going to be me, myself, and I versus Edelweiss, which uh, could be honestly the game of the year if it comes to that. So don't miss either of those because, uh, you know, someone's going to get crowned in either one of those two matches. So uh, big, big night for Collective Mayhem. They keep their, their hopes alive. And we will see if they can create a little bit of magic here in the last two two series of the season. Mark Shire, any other final thoughts you had on uh, on tonight's match? Uh, really happy to see Mayhem keep it alive. And I, I think in the match that a lot of people thought they were the least likely to do, uh, Cinder's record has not been amazing this season. Uh, definitely not compared to... Mako, who number one in the Hearth Center power rankings for much of the season, um, started in the four seed, came up into the three, and continued to win. Um, but he did fall to Cinder. Um, so I, I'm just happy that we we still have some more finals matches going. We have two more opportunities to uh, uh, see the rag final streamed before we eventually crown a victor. Yep, always exciting to uh, to have as many consequential matches as possible. And uh, as, as we were mentioning, uh, you know, we, we're going to be off here for the next few days. So Saturday will be the next uh, anticipated stream day for, for either series, really. But I do want to wish everybody, at least everybody who's celebrating it here in the U.S., uh, happy Thanksgiving, of course. So we'll be off on Thursday and uh, Friday as well. If you're not uh, celebrating Thanksgiving, just eat some turkey anyway, because it's pretty awesome and you should do that as much as humanly possible. And uh, again, thank you to uh, to Mark Shire, of course, for for coming on tonight and helping cast. And thanks to Donnie for uh, you know stream mopping in the background, even though he tried to bail out of it at the last possible <laughs> second. <laughs> still love you for uh, you know uh, for, for doing it. Yeah, no, no, re real talk. Uh, Donnie does so much. Um, so props to him and and props to you, Don, today for uh, sticking out not only with the amazing stream content you've provided this entire season but also uh for being here tonight and for all the other uh five matches 
I, I couldn't do it without you guys. You know, it's it's not like it's a solo effort in any, any way. So I don't want to take any any real credit for that. Uh, everybody works hard on everything. That goes for the blog, too. Uh, so a uh, shout out to everybody this season. Uh, I guess this is like our, our wrap-up show for Hearth Center and our wrap-up show for, for yeah. us casting. So this is the last one we're scheduled for. So we're just kind of doing the, you know, the thing till they pull us off the stage uh, with, with the music. But, uh, yes, thank you to everybody <laughs> who created content this season, period. Uh, you guys are, are the best, and it, it's what makes this league run so uh, it's uh, it's it's always nice to uh, to have more people involved so definitely talk to us if you want to get involved uh next season but donnie is officially playing the music to yank us off a stage right now <laughs> he's telling us to end the stream <laughs> so we'll go ahead and do that and let you guys get back to your wednesday night so thank you for joining us and we look forward to uh to seeing you in chat here for the next few games of the two uh two series finals so uh I'm Donde. Have a great night. Mark Shire, thank you for being here, and I hope you guys uh, enjoy your holiday week.